data handling in this lesson we are going to learn about data and how to organize data so let us see what is data data is nothing but some information which is in the form of words or in numbers let us understand better with some examples in our daily life we will come across some situations like buying a new camera or a phone say for example we wanted to buy a mobile phone or a camera or a laptop so what do we do first we inquire about various brands of cameras or mobile phone say for example we wanted to buy a mobile phone first we will inquire about various brands of mobile phones available in our budget then we will see their technical features that is the facilities that they have fm radio bluetooth wi-fi and dual sim triple sim all these features so we have to collect the information and then organize the information then we can come for a good decision that is the best decision that means we can identify which brand is the best in the suitable price so for all this we need to collect the information and organize the information in a proper way so that organization of information is called handling the data so we call it as data handling so how this data handling helps us it helps us in taking a right decision so that is when we organize the total information about our mobile phone we can easily find out which brand is the best if we are not organizing it simply looking at the features of various brands separately we may not be able to come for a right decision right conclusion so by organizing the data we come for a right decision in this way data handling helps us to take right decision in our day-to-day -day situations recording data now we will see an example in this we will understand how to record the data Lakshmi is getting ready for her picnic in the picnic she wanted to gift the favorite fruits to her friends then Lakshmi's mother asked Lakshmi to find out what are the favorite fruits of her friends then Lakshmi collected the information from friends and she prepared a list like this Lakshmi orange Preeti Goa Radha orange Uma custard apple Reshma Goa Mary orange Lata orange Gauri banana Salma custard apple Rita Goa so she has prepared a list like this and gave this list to her mother for arranging the fruits now the mother has to find out which fruit is required in which number as this list is small Lakshmi's mother counted the number of the fruits required in each type and she prepared a small list like oranges so total how many oranges are required one two three four four people need oranges then Goa how many need Goa one two and three and the next one custard apple custard apple one two that is two and banana one so this is the number she has got if the number is big, if the list is big, if Lakshmi's friends are 50 in number, it will be very difficult for Lakshmi's mother to count manually. If the data is big, if the information is more, if the list is bigger, we need some other methods to organize the data. Now we will learn how to organize data. Now organization of data. If the data is more, the information is more. Now let us see how to organize it. Here we have the raw data. Out of this data, we need some special information. That is, which mark is obtained by maximum number of students, or which is the maximum mark, or how many students have got least mark, and how many students have got eight marks. So such kind of questions to be answered. So to do so, to answer such questions, we have to organize this raw data. Here we have a table 
to organize the data. Let us see how to organize the data. In the first column, we have marks obtained. So let us start with the least mark. So this assignment is for 10 marks and the least mark is 2. 2 marks. To count the number of people, we have here tally marks. They let us easily count the number of students. So we put one tally mark for one student here. So two marks who has got one, two, three, and four. So four students have got two marks. So we write number of students, four. Next least mark, three. No one has got three. So you move to the next one, four marks. Four marks, how many have them got? One and uh, two, three, four, five. So the fifth tally mark, we keep a cross line like this. Four tally marks straight and fifth one a diagonal line. So five students got four marks. Next one is five. How many have got five? One, two, two and three and four and five and six so six students have got five marks the next mark is six one two only two two tally marks two members seven marks how many of them got one two three, four, four tally marks. Next one, eight marks. Has anyone got eight marks? No. So the next will be nine. How many got nine marks? You have one, two, three, three people. And finally, 10 marks. Only one student got 10 marks. Only one student got 10 mark. So in this way, we organized the raw data. Now we are able to answer how many students got eight marks. Here, no one, no one has got eight marks. Which mark is obtained by maximum number of students? So which mark is obtained by maximum number of students? Number five, five marks is obtained by six students. No other mark got by that many students. Okay, and which is the least mark here? Least mark. Two is the least mark and how many students got the least mark? Four students. Four students got the least mark. Okay, and how many students got that highest mark? Ten marks only. One student got the highest mark. This way, by organizing a raw data, we can get the required information. Representation of data. In the previous example, we have seen organization of data. How to organize a raw data using a frequency distribution table. So we made a frequency distribution table in the before example. So now we will see how to represent a data in a better form, in a more convenient form. We can represent the data using pictographs and bar graphs. So let us see what is a pictograph. So pictograph is a kind of table in which we use pictures to represent the data. Say for example, in a library, there are books of different subjects like Telugu, English, Hindi, Maths, Science and Social. So now we are going to represent the number of books in the form of pictures. See here Telugu, here in place of number 4, we have given the pictures of books. English 3, Hindi 4, Maths 6, this way. Sometimes if the number of books is more, for example, Telugu books 40 are there. So 40 pictures of books, it is a difficult task to draw. In such cases, we can set a scale. Say for example, one book is equal to 5 books. So, one book picture is equal to 5 books. Say for example, we have 20 Telugu books. 
so we represent four books the scale what is the scale one book picture is equal to five books so five into four 20 in this way by setting up a scale we can draw less pictures for more number of items construction of a bar graph we already learned that a data can be represented well using a pictograph and a bar graph here we have a data about the people who are living in a colony so there are different types of people are living in a colony now we are going to analyze the data we are going to get a clear idea or picture of the data using a bar graph now let us see how to make a bar graph using this data here in the colony farmers 40 people private employees 15 government employees 35 and businessmen 10 and laborers 5 in number now let us see how to construct a bar graph using this data to represent the data in the form of a vertical bar diagram let us do the following steps first draw two perpendicular lines one horizontal name it as x axis and the other one vertical name it as y axis along the y axis mark number of people and along the x axis mark the professions select a suitable scale on the x axis say for example 1 cm equal to 5 persons now calculate the heights of the bars by dividing the frequencies with the scale farmers 40 divided by 5 8 businessmen 10 divided by 5 2 private employees 15 divided by 5 3 government employees 35 divided by 5 7 laborers 5 divided by 5 1 